The Lord be with you. We uh, are glad again to, to gather as God's people and to rejoice that, that God is with us this morning. He's with us in his word. He's with us uh, in that word as, as we speak to one another. Uh, Martin Luther called it the, the mutual consolation of brothers and sisters in Christ. That as we even just talk with each other in God's spirit, that God is in those conversations too and literally bringing uh, his love and grace and forgiveness uh, in that dialogue uh, as well. In the back of your bulletin, I don't know why I tell you this every week, you know that there are announcements back there, right? Um, there are lots of things uh, going on. We did want to highlight just a couple of them. Um, next, I'm sorry, two Sundays from now on February 23rd, uh, the church council in conjunction with the call committee uh, has called a special voters meeting uh, as per the process uh, in our constitution. Uh, when we call it a special voters meeting outside of the two standard ones a year, uh, we have to announce the agenda ahead of time. And the only things that can be brought up at that meeting uh, are those agenda items. There are two items. Um, the first item is an update from our building committee uh, as to as they've been working through things and uh, listening to feedback and the like. Uh, they have developed uh, an essential uh, a scope of, of work and some very general plans uh, for what they anticipate for the building project moving forward. They want to give you an update, uh, show you where they're at at this point, uh, and ask uh, for feedback. It's not so much a, of a decision or, or vote that's necessary, uh, but it was an opportunity to uh, dialogue with the congregation. Uh, the reason we're having the voters meeting is that the second item does actually require uh, a congregational vote, and that is the issuing of a call for an assistant pastor. Um, after uh, much work by the call committee, um, we, uh, as we said in, January, uh, said in December, uh, we went to Concordia Seminary St. Louis uh, to interview candidates. Uh, we interviewed uh, five uh, we are coming with a recommendation to call uh, any of three. Uh, that The three that we are recommending, the call committee felt they were all uh, equally uh, fulfilling of the job description, uh, each bringing unique gifts and backgrounds, uh, yet all equally qualified and able to uh, serve us as assistant pastor. Um, that requires a vote of the congregation. Um, in the uh, entryway, Underneath uh, our new message board, the screen, there, there's a packet, and in that packet is a description of the process that got us to this point, along with uh, a one-page summary of each of the candidates. You'll see their picture, you'll see their background, um, and some uh, opinions and thoughts from the uh, call committee. Again, that voters meeting will then be uh, after uh, the... Uh, late worship service on February 23rd, so two weeks uh, from today. I was worried Sue did not come with a prop today when I walked from the back, and then I was very reassured that she did. You have to live up to your own standards at this point. Well, this is my friend, and he helped with February Sunshine a number of years ago. Who remembers his name? Anybody? Mr. Matthews, come on. His name is Bob. Bob. So this is Bob, and Bob and I want you to remember that we need lots of juice and cookies for our hungry little buckaroos for February sunshine, SunWest Roundup. We're having our pep rally today after worship, so everyone who's going to be here at February Sunshine, all the big people who are helping, please come. It'll be short, important, and fun. Um, let's see. But it is necessary. Yes. We do need every volunteer who is uh, volunteering in February Sunshine to be there, um, including some fulfilling of our new congregational policy uh, for child protection uh, policies. Uh, we do need... Uh, everyone who is going to, to be volunteering to be at that meeting. Thank you. Very good. Um, if anyone has any kind of Western things they'd like to bring next week, and if you want to help afterwards to get us set up and, and have everything looking great for the kids, and I'd like you to be praying for all the kids and their families. We're up to 
96 kids so far. Nice, excellent, very so good. Yes. 14 different churches, some with no church home. So uh, Bob and I really hope that you remember all the things, especially to pray for the kids. Otherwise you might feel a little like him and that would be? Sheepish? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Got one. So remember to pray Jesus every day. <laughs> Uh, we're going on the road soon with this act. Uh, I was going to sing Ba, 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 the Lamb, but good. <laughs> uh, we certainly rejoice, and again, that opportunity, that, that uh, joy that we have in, in sharing the gospel, both within our congregation and with those outside of our congregation as well, too. And in fact, that's what we're going to talk about uh, in uh, the sermon this morning. Jesus is Sermon on the Mount continues. Uh, last week we talked uh, through the Beatitudes about being blessed. And this week, uh, as he takes that message and moves forward, uh, we're going to look at that this morning uh, in our gospel lesson. Uh, as we begin this morning, our, our worship service is printed out for us in our bulletin. I'd like to invite you to rise for our, our invocation and our opening sentences. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. People of God, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all nations. For great is his steadfast love toward us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Mighty Lord, keep us from selfish pleasure seeking, from quarreling, and from ignoring the poor, that reflecting the light of your mercy and goodness, our lives may shine brightly with your love for the sake of our neighbors in need. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished." Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. In response to God's word, we join together to make profession of our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord Jesus, we will rise. 
When you call our names, we know that, that our destiny in, in you is certain. We have been called to eternal life. And that life is already now in Christ. Lord, help us to, to shine forth with that light, with the hope that we have in you of eternal life. And may that light shine into each of our lives. Bless us as we think about your word today, your word uh, and that call to discipleship, a call to be the risen people that you have made us to be. Bless us as we hear your words. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, how are you? Just checking. <laughs> For those who weren't here last week, uh, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, as he begins to describe discipleship, begins with what we know as the Beatitudes, the life of being blessed. That no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the call in life, no matter the situation, we are blessed. Even when the bad things happen, even when the hardships, even in, in the troubles we're blessed. And that is always our point of orientation. It's always our condition. It's always our state of being. It's what makes each one of us grounded. We are blessed. And sometimes we forget that. And sometimes we lose sight of that. That we're blessed. And discipleship always begins there, the blessed life. Blessed not because of what we are doing, not blessed because of the situation around us. In fact, so often it's in spite of that. We are blessed because of Jesus. He's the one who has overcome and therefore we overcome. He's the one that suffered and died, that, that we would have the eternal life to, to which we cling. I can't. I can't get it right. I can't do it. I, I can't think correctly. I can't always be the child he made me to be. Therefore, he did. You heard Jesus say, I'm not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Jesus has done it all for us. That's why we will rise. It's why we're blessed. That's what the gospel was all about, that, that we are blessed. But that was just the opening paragraphs. It was the opening sentences of the, the Sermon on the Mount. The, the problem is that sometimes in our walk of discipleship, we kind of quit there. It's as if we sit back and, yep, I'm blessed. Life is good. Lord, I praise you. You are wonderful. You are awesome. And you've given it all to me. And I'm blessed. And I'm going to sit here right now and just enjoy the fact that I am blessed. I've heard the, the quote uh, attributed to, to a number of people over the years, not the least of which is, is Billy Graham. He wants... It is said, uh, called uh, the Lutheran Church of uh, Missouri Synod, uh, the Frozen Chosen. <laughs> the point being that to have the, the wonderful joy uh, of salvation by grace through faith, to have the, the solid truths uh, in Scripture, and then we just sit back and kind of very content, sitting here, enjoying what we have. But I said that the lesson on discipleship, the Sermon on the Mount, didn't quit there. It was beginning there. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. But if a salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. 
A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and glory to your Father who is in heaven. You know, it's, it's another object lesson, as it were. It's a, it's a point of, of comparison. Jesus describes his disciples as being two things, salt and light. Odd place at one point. You, you want to go, what do salt and light actually have to do with each other? You are the, the salt of the earth. Anybody have the grandmother who just loved that saying, oh, she's just the salt of the earth? That way that some people just talk about those certain people who are just those glorious people that affect those people around them. And their, their goodness just pervades their being. Salt. It's necessary. Uh, it's in almost uh, everything, including our own bodies, depending on how you define salt. And there are many different salts, not just sodium chloride, but uh, we're at a certain percentage of salt in our body. Uh, if you ever licked a, a wound, a little bit of blood, it tastes salty. Your tears, your saliva are salty. We uh, are literally uh, one of the important compounds. If, if you get the, that mixture... Uh, messed up in, in your blood, it'll affect all sorts of other things. We need salt. Salt right now, this time of year in the north, has a, a whole different meaning, right? I, I had to laugh reading it. it. It's no good if it loses its saltiness except to throw it out and trample under people's feet. And isn't that exactly what we do to salt this time of year? Throw it out and trample under our feet so that we don't go slipping? We actually need salt here for something completely different this time of year. And then he jumps to light. I'll spare you the long scientific questions on whether light is particle or light is energy, and there are fascinating theories uh, about light. But both of them actually have something very important as that connecting point. And it may not seem obvious first, but the connecting point for you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world isn't so much the salt and light, as it actually is the last word in those phrases. You are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. Salt and light are both important because both salt and light are valuable only when they affect other things. In and of themselves, they're rather worthless. Salt is simply a, a mineral in the ground. Salt finds its worth because it changes things around it. How many of you re remember the, the first time that maybe you were making chocolate chip cookies from scratch and you were stunned that one of the ingredients is salt? Chocolate chip cookies don't taste salty. No, because you put the right amount in that actually salt brings out the natural flavors in food. Someone once told me, once you taste salt, you've put too much on. But in that right amount, it actually makes the food more flavorful. Salt at its best, you don't notice the salt. You notice what it's changing. Even outside, why do we use salt out there? Because salt affects the melting point or the freezing point of water. It makes it lower so that even below freezing, the water will melt and then go away and not become ice. Salt is valuable even outside because it changes water. Light. Light in and of itself is actually quite worthless, believe it or not. You cannot see light. You can only see what light bounces off of. 
The light itself, you cannot see the light between me and you. What the light does is it shines on me, reflects off of me, and you actually see me. You don't see the light. The more light, the more reflection, and the more bright that becomes, but you're actually seeing the reflection. Why do we put the light in, in a room? Not so that you can see the light, but so that you can see the room. So that you can see what's in the room. Both salt and light are vitally important because they change what's around them. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Our calling as disciples is to change what's around us, the world, the earth. And we need to be exactly who we are called to be. That's why he's saying if salt loses its saltiness, if you hide a light, it's not doing what I made it to do. If we as a church are simply hiding, if we're not being who God made us to be, we're not his disciples. We're not doing what God called us and made us and gifted us to be. We are called to to live that out, not to sit there sitting back relaxed with all of those gifts, but to share them, because that's the cycle of discipleship. It always begins with God. As I said, it's God who saved us. It's God who forgives us. It's God who gifts us. It's God who gives us that faith, and that faith then is lived out in a life of word and deed, Notice that he says it's not that you just hear the word, but that you, they see your good deeds. They see and experience who God has made you to be. And then when they experience that, they give thanks and praise to our Father who is in heaven. Who has gifted us and saved us and redeemed us, and called us, and created faith in order that the faith would produce good works, and that the good works in tune would affect other people so that they in turn would give glory to the Father who is in heaven, give thanks for what God has gifted them in order that they would share that gift with others so that they in turn would give thanks. And do you see the kingdom of God at work? It's multiplying itself. It's moving forward. It's not sitting still anymore. But it's being advanced person by person, action by action, as we live that calling and we live what God has made us to be in the lives of others. And that's what discipleship is all about. We don't just sit still and receive, but we receive in order that we can give. We let God do for us all those wonderful things that we then in turn do those for others. We're not hiding it, we're not hoarding it, we're not wasting it, we're using it. We're being what each individually God made us to be. And that's the calling for us as church. You know, sometimes we talk about, the, could you read that second paragraph without humming, hide it under a bushel? No, I'm going to let it shine. Well, why are we hiding and what are we hiding under? I sometimes worry that the church is actually hiding under ourselves, under our own roof, and in our own place. Missing the point and the opportunity of discipleship to share it with the world around us, to share it with those who are in the dark, to share it with those in need, not just those who are here, but to let the light shine. Don't hide it, don't cover it, but to let it shine. And I'm grateful for the opportunities that we have to do just that. Because that's when we're being church at our best. This week I received a letter, we received a letter in the church office. And sometimes we, me, church, sometimes fails to share those opportunities and to share the thank yous when we really do impact people and we really do make a difference. And you need to know that, that so often we, we 
make those appeals uh, to, I just think about December, giving tree um, and uh, wish list and, and all the different things that we do from, from food pantry to Capital City Rescue Mission to all the different things that we do. And then sometimes miss that we do those for a reason and that God uses those. Well, I don't even know where to begin, so I'll start with thank you. Thank you to all who helped and supported my son. We've had a very bad year with lots of sadness, tragedy, and loss. We lost my mother after a battle with cancer. My dad, who has never been sick, had to have his first surgery ever. My son fought for custody of his daughter, and won, by the way. Then two weeks after getting a new home for him and his daughter, he had a severe car accident. He was in the hospital for a month while they tried to save his right arm. He is now disabled with his three-year-old daughter. After coming home from the hospital, he needed a great deal of help. I was his daily nurse, etc. One day after I left his house going to work, someone pulled in front of me and I had a major car accident and totaled my car. My husband came to the scene of the accident and was hit by a car. Yes, really. It actually said, yes, really. <laughs> We're both okay. Our lives have been crazy for the last year. And we are so thankful for our friend Denise Molino, who has helped our family in so many ways and introduced us all to you. Deacon Dee Dee went way beyond the call to help us in so many ways. She got people to donate wood. She got a neighborhood group to donate fuel, and she gave us food from the food pantry. Ex explanation, we put out an appeal over our website. Many of you uh, had extra wood to donate. Uh, Joe Albano and Bud LaCroix uh, gathered lots of that and delivered it to her house. She mentions the neighborhood group, that's Bethlehem Community Fund. Remember back when, as part of Village Mart, we chose them as uh, the, our outside group that we were going to benefit, they then, in, in turn, we uh, uh, connected her with them, and they were able to gift her with literally some of the same money that we had just gifted uh, them. A food pantry, as you may not put that thought to, to how, just of that simple appeal that we put in now and then, hey, the food pantry's running low, can you help us stock up? It makes a difference. It touches people for Christ. Dee worked with me daily to get my son help. She even gave me someone to give me disability advice, who actually was Marie Scalzo in our church office that Dee connected to because she knew that she had that background through her work with the state. My son cried every time you gave to him. This is so hard for him to deal with. He's a hard worker and wants to work and can't stand not being able to. So from the two of us and our family, I would like to thank all who gave, beginning with Denise, to the men who did the wood and delivered, to the company who gave us the oil, to Dee Dee for all her strong help and support for the advice I received. You hold a special place in our hearts, and if there's anything we could do for you, please let us know. We'd be glad to help. I've truly been blessed with our friendship with Denise, thankful for all she brought all of us into, and brought all of you into our lives. So from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you all for everything to affect people's lives for Christ. And, and notice already the desire in her, having received, having seen all that we did for her, she now wants to be a part of that, that she can share for someone else and give glory to God who has touched her life so that in the turn, she will be able to touch someone else, that they in turn, they will give God glory. It's what God has made us to be. It's what God calls us to do as disciples, to, to affect other people for Christ, to take the joy that we are blessed and now be a blessing to others. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven.
Amen.